Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now every now and then something crazy happens to me. I'm just sitting there and I have these beautiful knives and something in my head starts to go crazy and says, you know what, these knives are way too beautiful. This one's too shiny. You need to do something about it. So what do I do? I get a little bit nuts and I say, ah, hell with it. I'm going to modify it. You know what? For me, something about modifying a knife is an excellent way to kind of put your mark on it. You know, there's something about it. I mean, I don't know. I've had some pretty good luck and overall done some things that have worked out pretty nice for me. And I've definitely taken some knives that were basically run of the mill. Anybody could get their hands on them and turn them into something that's become one of my own. And overall, I like that being able to take something and actually turning it into a creation, making a little project out of it, giving you a reason to kind of play with your blades. And that's what I'm talking about today. Now recently I had a chance to get my hands on these beautiful TFK blades. This is Tanev Family Knives. These knives are handmade. They are made in Bulgaria by a small family owned company. And these are fabricated out of D2 tool steel. Now I've always said in my mind, you know what? I'm really curious about D2. Is it a stainless steel? Is it carbon steel? I've had multiple discussions about this and people kind of go back and forth and say, well, it's semi stainless and blah, blah, blah. Well, it's carbon steel, but it's not that strong. Well, at this point, I've had a chance to use these blades on a number of occasions, and they have performed extremely well. So I am overall happy with the quality and the durability of this D2 tool steel. But then I wanted to know about how much will this patina? Am I able to get this thing to patina? So here I have my Pico. I got a little bit itchy and scratchy and said, you know what? I'm going to take my T7 out for a little bit of a spin and see if we can have some fun with it. So if you're curious about what I'm talking about and what I might be up to, do me a favor, stay tuned. So when I talk about modifying my blades, it's never mattered how big, how small, how cheap or how expensive, what kind of coatings, what kind of materials. If it came down to modifying it, I certainly gave it a try. And with that said, I have a number of blades here that I've messed around with over time just to give you some examples. So here I have a Kershaw Camp 14, which started its life as a coated blade. And then furthermore, I have ground myself a finger choil. Now I have to admit, I don't go to this blade all that often, but when I do, it's pretty darn comfortable and I've made it something of my own. Now I've never been a fan of coatings and especially when it comes to something like the SE Hungalus. So here you see this beautiful slab of 1095 that I've absolutely stripped the coating and added my own custom patina. Now this gives it that sort of weathered and used look. Well, that's part of the story. Bottom line is, this blade is weathered and used. I mean, definitely a go-to blade for me. This has had a lot of handle time in my hands, and I love it. And, you know, again, just something about modifying a blade and customizing it that just really makes it your own. And then I tend to kind of gravitate it even that much more. In a similar fashion, I've practiced patinas on tons of carbon steel. So here on the BK7, and even furthermore, on the BK9. Taking that BK9 just a little bit further, adding some aftermarket handle scales, a pretty cool lanyard, and on top of it all, a nice finger choil. And even in certain cases where I have blades that quite simply won't patina because of the steel, I've gone as far as to grind off finger guards and do all kinds of things. So I definitely enjoy modifying my blades. Now sometimes you end up with a blade whose steel just wants to patina naturally on its own. I do have some where I'm nice and patient, and even though they start their lives nice and shiny, over a while they do get that nice sort of natural patina. But then there's other times when I really want to force the issue. And so here you'll see my CFK Falcata. 
Now, the CFK Falcata started its life a little bit rough for me, came in kind of rough shape when I received it. So I took some time and I shined it up and got it all back to a nice shiny finish. But then I said, well, that blade's way too shiny. Let's add a patina. So I figured I'd boil up myself some vinegar and see how it took. Distilled white vinegar on carbon steel really makes some pretty significant patina and you can see the bubbles coming off of the steel and then at the end of the process, a nice even black finish. So at the end of it all, I end up with a blade that has its own unique look, certainly differentiates itself from any other one out there, has my own sort of signature style and gave me ultimately a project to really just hang out and play with my blades. And so that takes me to my TFK. What am I going to do with these blades? Well, as I mentioned, I was kind of sitting there and wanted to have a project uh, that allowed me to play with these, but then also understand a little bit more about that D2 tool steel. So this here is my Pico, and this here is my T7. Now this T7 has been modified at this point, and I'm not going to reveal the results of this until the very end. So at this point, why don't you hang tight? See what I did to this T7 to give it a little of my own style. So as I mentioned every now and then, I'm sitting around and I say, my blades are way too shiny. Well, that was the case with this T7. And I figured this would be a great opportunity to try to get a forced patina on it using some boiled distilled vinegar. Now, if you look at this blade really close, you'll see that it started to patina just a little bit. So there's some marks on there, some fine little dots and details, things that came quite honestly from cutting up my marinated steak. So as I mentioned, I pulled out the distilled white vinegar and got to work. Pouring myself up a good amount into this pan, I'm going to boil it up and get it prepared. Now while this is busy boiling up, let's take a real quick look at a few of my other D2 blades. So here are the blades I have in D2 tool steel. Here we have the Boker Vox Rolled, which I very much like. It's about the same size as an SE6. Um, but a little bit different in terms of the overall blade profile. And again, with that D2 tool steel, um, this has an interesting pattern on here where it is kind of almost like a stonewash finish. And actually, you'll notice that most of these blades do have finishes on them, except for that TFK. So again, just having a stonewash finish on the D2 tool steel on this Boker Vox Rolled. Next in line here, we have a Maxpedition. This is the geometric, um, this is the size medium. So um, a very interesting blade. I have done a review on this and overall I like it. It's not my first choice, but I do like it. Um, it's interesting again, where it has almost a satin finish. I do tend to like a knife with a finger choil and in this, this particular case, it does. Same with the Vox Rolled. So for, in my liking, very comfortable knives. This has an interesting sweeping blade where it kind of has almost a tanto tip, but not exactly. And it's a full flat grind. So a very interesting blade. Now, I again have mixed feelings about this simply because of the handle shape, but overall, it's definitely a quality blade. Now here's the TFK Pico. Again, kind of like the uh, sister knife, so to speak, to my T7 here. So um, again, just a nice finish, a clean and polished look, uh, very beautifully sculpted, handmade by TFK Tanev Family Knives. Um, and I very much highly recommend you checking them out. Uh, just some beautiful and gorgeous work. And these knives have performed extremely well, both in durability and I'll leave that for later. So anyway, next in line is one of my favorite folders ever. This blade is just amazing. This is the Steel Will Gecko. Now this is the larger size. There is a mini model. This is the 1505. Again, D2 tool steel, extremely nicely made, but you'll notice again, this has a coating. 
This coating is extremely durable. I have absolutely beat on it. This to me has definitely been an EDC and I mean everyday carry knife. I have carried this for months on end and I can't get enough of it. Highly recommended, top notch, one of my favorite blades ever and that's going very far. So I highly recommend this knife. But again, just noticing that the D2 tool steel is coated. Now moving on, probably one of my second favorite knives, and I would say in terms of a folder, definitely my second favorite folder after this Gecko. This is my Kislar Supreme Whisper. Again, another blade that I've done a review on. I very, very much like this. And in a similar fashion to some of these other blades, just taking a quick look at it, you will notice that this D2 tool steel is coated. This particular blade has a traditional Tonto style, so it's going back to the Japanese roots of the original Tonto style, not kind of the Americanized Tonto like you see on like cold steel and knives like that. So a very interesting shape, but most notably that the D2 tool steel is coated. Now another offering from Kislar Supreme, which is actually the first blade that I've ever owned in D2 tool steel. This is the Kislar Supreme Nikki. This is a great little EDC blade. It is very functional and very, very nice. I like it a lot. Extreme quality in terms of the overall build. I like Kislar Supreme a lot. I think it's sort of a sleeper brand. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people don't necessarily know about it, but I do very much like Kislar Supreme. I feel as though their manufacturing and quality is very high end, and ultimately their D2 tool steel is great. I can get these blades extremely sharp without a lot of effort and they have held an edge overall pretty well. And last but not least, that leaves me here with my TFK T7. This is my test subject for today, but at this point, you know what? I think that vinegar's just about boiled. So now the vinegar's come to a complete boil, and I'm gonna take my knife, get it into a pan, and then ultimately pour the boiling distilled vinegar over the knife. Now for this particular case, I thought it would work out pretty well if I timed this. So here you'll see I set up my stopwatch and got it running. Now I figured I'd check this on a regular basis to see what kind of patina was adding up. Now if you looked at the carbon steel, what you would have noticed is the bubbles generating pretty fast like on that falcata. Here you'll see even a minute in, I have no signs whatsoever of a patina starting to generate. The blade's still as shiny as the minute I put it in there. Now looking beneath the blade, you'll see some bubbles are starting to form. And at about three minutes in, I flip the knife over. Still, nothing to show for it. And so I waited. And waited. And waited. And after 10 minutes in the boiling vinegar, I figured, what the heck? Let's see if it hits the air and starts to oxidize. Now I let this air dry pretty much to the point where it completely dried itself off and said, what the heck? At this point, might as well wash the blade. A little warm water and some dish soap, and I got this thing nice and clean. And finally, drying off the blade so I can get a closer look and see what kind of a patina I have on here. Not only is there nothing, I think this blade's even shinier than when it started. Now at this point, it's pretty much removed any of the patina that already existed. This thing is purely shiny and gleaming. So, that leaves me the question. Is D2 tool steel a carbon steel or a stainless? So, alright guys, there you have it. A real quick look at my modification of the TFK T7. Now, obviously, like I mentioned, this did not patina at all. If anything, this looks shinier and cleaner than it did after substantial use. And that's just a testament to the quality of this D2 tool steel. 
Now, again, is it a carbon steel or is it a stainless steel? At this point, I'm pretty well confused. There's going to be some experts out there that can definitely shed a little more light on it. But in my opinion, this blade is excellent for overall outdoor and field use. You get the benefit of the carbon steel being nice and strong, durable, having an excellent edge. The heat treat on these blades was wonderfully done. And then beyond that, just having the overall stainless qualities, a blade that will not rust. This is going to be for you an excellent option for wet weather conditions overall. So just a quick little suggestion to the people at TFK, if you are able to actually create a Kydex for this T7 or the Pico blades, in my opinion, that would definitely be an excellent option. Getting a little bit away from the leather, just in the fact that the leather holds the moisture and then having that Kydex is really a great wet weather option. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found this a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.